Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Uh, super glad to have you here. Take a second before we get going and uh, click on that like and subscribe button for me. It definitely helps me out if you do that, and it, I think it helps other people find this content. Today, we're, we're starting a brand new series, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, you, hopefully, that comes through. We're going to talk about object-oriented programming, and I like object-oriented programming. I like design patterns. I like that stuff. Um, and you know what? In my opinion, your Platform Developer 1 or even your PD2 certifications don't really cover um, object-oriented programming, even though I think it's an essential thing that you need to know and understand to be a good Salesforce developer. And I'm going to say, so we all know, I mean, like at this foundation, like Apex is an object-oriented language. But I, I can't make this clear enough. Just because you are using an object-oriented language does not mean you're really doing object-oriented programming. So we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about all the fundamentals, the principles of object-oriented programming, and what they look like in Apex. And those, and we're not actually going to touch on these today, but those principles are abstraction, uh, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. And we'll see all of that in future videos. Today, we're going to talk about classes, and we're going to talk about their properties. Because that's really what uh, object-oriented programming is at its basic level, is it's a programming paradigm in which your code is organized into classes. And classes are just a set of blueprints. It's a factory for creating objects. So, you know, in Salesforce, right, if you say account A equals new account, right, that's the account class, right? And you are using that, you are using the account class to create an account object, right? Or we refer to them as S objects when they're, you know, built into the platform in that way. But, you know, fun, I mean, conceptually, it's the same thing. All right, so, we, create, we, we organize our code into classes. Classes have properties. Uh, properties are the things a class knows about itself, things it knows about the world, right? And, so, and you're going to hear them called properties. You may hear them called member variables, instance variables, really all, all the same thing, and methods, things that a class can do. Um, and then classes can interact with each other. And this is how, so this is how we design our code in object-oriented programming. So without further ado, that's enough of an introduction. Today, we're going to talk about classes. We're going to talk about a little bit about properties. And we're going to talk about constructors and how we chain constructors and how this all works. And each one of these videos is going to build on the next one until I'm not even really sure yet how many videos this is going to take. But I'm hoping you really have a great kind of foundational understanding of object-oriented programming. And what I'm going to call those more advanced pieces in the Apex language, particularly your interfaces, your virtual classes, and your abstract classes, and when you use them, and how incredibly powerful and useful they really are once once you wrap your head around them. It took me forever to wrap my head around an interface, and like, what was the heck of this thing with just method names, right, that didn't actually do anything. Um, but as we progress through this, I hopefully you're going to see how valuable this all is, and it, you'll be a better developer. So let's uh, open up our illuminated cloud and IntelliJ, as I say, the uh, the undisputed king of Salesforce IDEs. And we're going to create a new class. We're going to create a class car. And you know, as I get going, I feel like I need to take a minute to apologize for creating a car class. Um, every I feel like every single class in the world that deals with object-oriented programming at an introductory level uses cars or animals. And I always swore, man, if I ever give a class on this stuff, I'm not going to use cars or animals. I'm going to use something more realistic. Um, because truly, I mean, the, the classes we really write as programmers very generally are like cars or people or animals. They're generally dealing with much more abstract concepts. Um, but everybody understands a car. And what it, and so while it maybe is not the most realistic type of code that you'll do in your day-to-day -day programming language, I do think it's a very friendly example to use to help kind of make sense of all of these concepts as we build out, probably keep building out this car, you know, into things like composition, inheritance, etc. as we continue to build on through this. So we got our car class. All right. That's enough. So we've got, and that's all it is, right? We've got public was sharing class car. We've declared a car class and it can't do anything. So I think our car class should know a few things about itself. So I'm going to say, and I'm going to make, I'm going to make all of my member variables today, my properties, I'm going to make them public. And in the next video, we're going to talk more about that when we get into encapsulation. For today, they're all just going to be public, okay? So I'm going to say public string, 
A car should have a make. All right. Public string make. I'm going to say public string. Remember, we got to declare the type. So I'm going to say car should have a model. And then we're going to say um, whoop, no. public integer. And then we're going to say year, right? I mean, I think if, like that gives us, if we just want to come up with a car name, make, model, and year, that's, that's enough, right? That'll give us what we need. So I am going to uh, push this up real quick and just so I can work with it. For whatever reason, my control S, I got to figure out what I did wrong with my configuration that control S doesn't work anymore for me. And so let's go into uh, open up our anonymous Apex. All right. And what we're going to do, so let's just car, let's say Ford Mustang equals new car. All right. So what we've done, we've said, hey, take our car class. We're going to instantiate a an Ford Mustang object using the car class. And then, right, so we want to give, but if we ran system debug right now, system debug on Ford Mustang, and let's run that. See what we get back. Right, everything's null. None of these properties got set. So, you know, it's, it's somewhere or another. We, we'd want to set these properties. And we could do it like this. We could do Ford Mustang dot make equals Ford. And... We'll say Ford, we'll make model sorry about that. I should just shoot all these on PC because I can never get my Mac command keys right. Mustang. Make a semicolon up there. And we'll say Ford Mustang dot year equals 2020. Brand new car. All right. Well, let's run that. So, okay, there we go. So you can see we created a car. We created a car object based on our car class, and we set those properties to, to make Ford model Mustang and year 2020. And we got it back, but that's pretty clunky, right? And, you know, like we would never actually set class properties that way, typically. What we would do is we would pass them in as a constructor. And a constructor is a special kind of method that is inside of a class. And you can always tell it's the constructor because it has the same name as the class. So if you see a method inside a class and it has the same name, that's the constructor. So let's go down here, give ourselves a couple spaces, and we're going to say public car. And that's our car constructor. All right, now we're, we want to pass some things in. Let's say we're going to give it a string, make, string, model, and that's a comma integer year. All right. So we remember, so now we've got a constructor and we are passing in three parameters, passing in a string for the make, string for the model, and an integer for the year, the same as that we have up here for our properties. And then we're going to use, this is a, 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 a keyword, right? A reserve word, this. And this is going to refer to the current object that's being instantiated. So this car, this make equals make right and this dot model and that equals model and this dot year equals year all right and i want to emphasize like you don't have to use we could say string name and this dot make equals name uh but that's actually i mean it's like cumbersome and confusing and why would you that's it makes it much easier when your constructor names take the same values as your properties and now we could say so when we call car and we use the car constructor right we are going to assign these values so i'm going to delete what we currently had down there in our anonymous apex and i'm going to say We'll just call it car Mustang Mustang equals new car. 
and then we're just going to say Ford. Well, this is not Ford. Ford Mustang. And then 2020. And if we system.debug Mustang. And we didn't deploy that. I didn't compile that. One second. Run that again. And you can see, so now we pass things in through the constructor. And I mean, you know, you see this if you're just writing your very most basic Apex code, and we say account ACC equals new account, you call the account class. I mean, you call the account class, and the account has a constructor, right? Name equals fake ACC, right? And all those other things that are account properties, you know, industry, right? So you can set all of those things in your account constructor, in your opportunity constructor, in your contact constructor. Here's the cool thing about constructors though. You can have as many as you want. You don't just have to have one constructor. You don't have to have any constructors. If you remember our very first car class that we wrote, we didn't have a constructor. It was a zero argument constructor. Um, so we instantiated a car class, or a car object, excuse me, but we didn't have a constructor. We didn't set any of those values. So those properties, those fields, whatever you want to call them, they were, that's why they were all blank. That's why they're all set to null, because we had a zero argument constructor. So Apex will do that for you automatically. If you do not declare a constructor, it's going to give you a zero argument one. Uh, but as soon as you declare a constructor, you do not have a zero argument constructor unless you make one yourself, right? But so here's the thing, right? So we can have, you can have as many constructors as you want and you can chain them. So let's say we do still want a zero argument constructor. So I'm going to say public car, no values in that. And I'm going to say this.make equals unknown. This dot model equals unknown and this dot year. Uh, we'll just set it equal to 19. We need an equal sign, 1900. No particular good reason. Not sure if any kind of car even existed in 1900, but there you go. So let's deploy that. Let's compile this. See what we get when we run our, uh, let's make a car with car equals new car. This time we're not going to pass anything into the constructor, right? And we'll just go to our debug log to see what we get back. There we go. So you can see when we ran it, that one, we, now we have a zero argument constructor again. Let's fix our spelling there when we get a chance. Instead of uncone, unknown, pardon me. Um, i got to fix my spelling. Sorry, this is driving me nuts. Change to... Um, so we can say we got our values back. And that's what happened when we ran a zero argument constructor. And so we're going to do one more just to kind of, you know, drive the concept home. Now, if we want, what if we want a two argument constructor? We want to create a car with a make a model, but we do not care about the year at all. So let's say we're going to go public car string make string model. And we could say this dot make equals make and this dot model equals model. And a semicolon there and year equals we'll do nineteen hundred again. Compile this real fast. So 
So let's do one last car. We're going to say car. Pickup equals new car. And we're going to say, let's make this a, I don't know why I keep doing Fords today, because I'm not even really a car person. So Ford and F-150. Print this one out too. Pick up. Run it. And there you can see, so we got our Ford F-150 back uh, with the year 1900. So three. So we managed to have a zero argument constructor, a two argument constructor, and a one argument constructor. So I really hope this was helpful. If it was, again, please take a second and click the like and subscribe button for me. And the next video, we're going to come back and we are going to talk about encapsulation and how we keep other people from coming along and changing our, when we create a Ford Mustang, so no other developer could come by and turn that into a Chevy Mustang. Or if we, you know, create a Dodge Charger, nobody can make it a Ford Charger, etc. right? So that's how we're going to talk about our encapsulation in the next video. How we do getters and setters, if you're used to having to do all the work that you have to do in Java to write a getter and setter. So thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, keep on coding, keep practicing, and I'll see you soon.